Tuesday to everybody. Um, good off week for us, gets a couple things done. I mentioned this uh, uh, last night on the radio show, but it allows us, one, to get uh, some of our guys that have been really playing uh, through injuries and bumps and bruises to give them a little bit of help. It allows us to get some guys that are right on the edge of coming back and helping us. Uh, Malik McLean, uh, Elijah Winston, Jordan Isefa, just one step closer and get them going. Um, it allows us to advance uh, some young people that are right on the cusp uh, for having to go in there and play one play away. Gets us a little bit ahead for Notre Dame, to be honest with you. We started installing some of the base game plan uh, today uh, for Notre Dame. Uh, and it allows us uh, on a Friday, we'll have two padded practices tomorrow and the next day. And then Friday, our kids will do a strength and conditioning uh, circuit, and then uh, we'll have the opportunity to go out and recruit. Uh, so um, I know injury-wise, you want to know where everybody's at. Uh, the quarterback situation is Keenan's allowed right now to clear uh, to practice uh, without contact. He's not cleared for contact yet. But it's good to get him back out here, get him throwing, uh, and get him exerted, uh, which is good. Um, we'll uh, go through the week, uh, allowing both quarterbacks Backs to be able to get better and exceed, and we'll see you know where we are medically uh, going into next week. I'll be able to let you know hopefully by next Tuesday where we stand uh, on that, if not sooner. Um, Talanoa is the same way. He, he's allowed to practice uh, without contact. Elijah Griffin felt good today. Practiced. Uh, I expect him. I, I would expect him to be back uh, for the next game. So hopefully this is a week that allows us to catch up health-wise and get a get a healthier ball club going into South Bend. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions that you got. Yeah, you know, um, there's some guys that, like I said, have been really playing through some through some hurts and pains, and Ra has been playing with a, with a, not only a foot but a shoulder um, and, and fighting through it. Uh, Christian Rector has been playing with that high ankle sprain and really fighting through it. Uh, Vavai, uh, you, you know, uh, we saw the knee the knee a couple weeks ago and has really, um, you, you know, really been fighting through that. So to be able to shut them down just for a couple days and allow them to catch back up and allow those things to heal is real really important. Uh, we saw the guys that just had bumps and bruises out here are still practicing they'll go through the week but the guys that have significant things that we need to get um get a handle on uh, we're allowing this week liam jimmins got in there saturday was yeah. that was there an injury to jalen or was it just an opportunity for liam no it was an opportunity for liam he's really been putting in great work out here he got 10 snaps in the game uh the big run that stephen carr had was really him he ate up the four eye technique and did a tremendous job and, um and, you know it gives him uh, a really really happy for him for making the conversion from d-line to offensive line that progression trust in the process and really put himself in a position where we felt man this guy can get, get in there and give us some reps at that guard position um, let Jalen catch his breath for a second or you know if we were to have an injury at one of the tackles Jalen would have to go out there you know so it, it allows him to get in the game feel what that's like and he had 10 great snaps so he'll continue to play he did a nice job is Voorhees still out indefinitely um, right now he's one of the ones that we're going to evaluate through this week mm -hmm. and see how it's going uh, you know he's got one more week of, of being able to rehab it uh, we'll test it out next week see where it's at and then we'll make a decision for the rest of the season based off uh, where he's at and how he's feeling so I'll be able to let you know for sure what the future looks like with him uh, next Tuesday which younger players do you want to get more work this week um, you know some of the guys that in the secondary I think it's going to be really important to continue to advance even though they're playing a lot of the reps um, but you also you get a Jaden Williams uh, a Max Williams um, uh, Raylan Goforth, who's been those guys that have been playing special teams that are literally, you know, one snap away from having to go in and, and being the guy. Um, so it, it's going to help us, I think, uh, a bunch defensively with that young secondary and some young linebacking core that is literally a snap away from having to go in there and be a major contributor. I think it's also going to help the young wideouts uh, like Drake London and, and Maneer McClain, a John Jackson that are, are literally one step away. A Jude Wolf, um, who's now his contribution is going to have to go up with Josh uh, suffering an MCL sprain. You know, so he's going to have to be ready for Notre Dame. So those guys that are right on the cusp, this is a really important week for them. Marquis Step was committed to Notre Dame, decommitted. Uh, what do you recall from his recruitment and, and that moment when he kind of became back on the market, so to speak? Yeah, I, I just felt like we were really fortunate uh, to get a guy of that caliber and, and just a first-class person uh, that I thought handled his recruiting the right way um, and, you know, came out here, had a very genuine interest and love for this place um, and went through the process and thought it out and said, you know what, this is the best fit for me. 
um, and, and sometimes going a little bit of ways from home mm -hmm. is the best fit. And, um, proud of what he's doing. He, I mean, wow, what, what, a, what a, another good game that he's had. So proud of where he's at as a redshirt freshman. Uh, he's got a bright future. Were you guys looking at him when he was still committed to them, or did it really start after? Well, we had a relationship yeah. with him. Uh, you know, usually these kids, you know how recruiting is. I mean, you know him since ninth, tenth grade, <laughs> and so you get you get to know him, and then uh, you hope you draw enough interest that they'll come out, make an official visit, and and, and like it. And in his case, he did. He loved it. Um, and and credit to his parents. I, I thank his parents every time I see him for letting him come from India, Indianapolis, Indiana, all the way out to Los Angeles, California, and the trust to allow their baby to come out here and uh, us to adopt him. And, and uh, watch over them and grow them into a man. I know you talked a little bit about the Fair, Fair Pay to Play Act uh, mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like just what you know about about the law in California currently, do you feel like that would affect a coach's job significantly, especially when you're talking about maybe the recruiting trail or getting recruits? Or... You know, I, and I said this last night, I, I, think it's, I think it's really too early to tell where this thing's going to go. You know, when you're talking about 2023, sure. uh, it, you know, it, it is a topic of discussion right now. It's an important topic of discussion. Obviously, it's a national topic. Um, and, you know, you know, our state and our governor and our legislature made a made a decision, made a full speed decision, um, and now between the the state legislation, between the NCAA, between universities, we got four years to figure out where it goes to from here. And as coaches do, rules change and, and things change. And, and for a coach, what's your job is your job to adapt. And in my 25 years, a lot of stuff has changed. Uh, it, it continues to, and so um, and that's part of being a coach is adapting with the changing. Culture. Culture, the changing rules, the changing environment, and this will be one of those. Mm -hmm. um, but I have great trust in our state legislature as well as the NCAA as well as the universities um, that they'll come up. And this isn't just the only state. There's going to be multiple. Mm -hmm. I heard Florida is, is already trying to get one passed. And mm -hmm. So it, it'll be a national topic, and, and uh, over a course of time it'll get figured out uh, what's best for both both sides. Mm -hmm. Have you made Florida's any certain... looking at 2020. Mm -hmm. They may be speeding mm -hmm. things up. Yeah. I'm in California, so I'll, 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 even though my home state is far. <laughs> have, you, have you made any certain red shirt decisions at this point now? Um, you, you know, we're, we're going through in this off week and, and evaluating kids this week. Um, a lot, some kids have already passed yeah. the four games, uh, you, you know, that, that we're committed to, you know, playing for the rest of the years. Some guys are sitting at two, three, four games um, and, uh, and still having a, a game available uh, to do. But when we hit that four game mark, we sit down with guys and be able to say, okay, here's where we are. Here's where we are. You're making significant contribution. I have a huge database sheet that I get at each Monday that has the player's total number of plays for the season for each game, offense, defense, special teams, and I look at their contribution and what they're doing. And uh, once we commit to a kid that, that it's, it's his opportunity to play the whole season, then we're trying to garner enough reps yeah. for it to be a quality season where they can get, you know, hopefully 100 plays or more on tape. You know whether that's offense, defense, and special teams. But with uh, Keaton and Matt Fick now both having road starts under their belt, how helpful would that be if there is any uncertainty mm -hmm. going into next week about Keaton's status? Well, I, I think, and I'm so happy for both because they've got experience, and that's what makes a quarterback. Is, and it's not only the success; it's the failures too that you end up learning from. And both of them have had success and failed and they've grown from it. And uh, I'm happy for both of them that they got the opportunity. I've told them both that, that uh, learn from each experience. And uh, they will. And, and being on the road, they've learned is hard. Uh, and and uh, there's a uh, level of decision-making and discipline that it's even harder when you're not in the friendly confines of the Coliseum. So for both of them to get that experience, wow. That's awesome. Just it, it raises their stock as players and helps them grow as quarterbacks. Okay. All right, okay. guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mark. Hey,